Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen video. This is the first video after the end of my Movember fundraising campaign and I'd like to thank everyone who helped me in support of men's health. Together we've raised $350, which is well past my original goal. So thank you all very much for your support. It's hard to believe, but another year has rolled around and this is my top fountain pens list for 2022. Just to remember that this is my favorite pen experiences of 2022, not yours. And my list will only contain pens that I've reviewed in 2022. There are plenty of excellent pens that I use every day, but won't be on this list because they were reviewed previous to 2022. I had to limit the list to 10 pens with one runner up because of a lot of excellent fountain pens that I've come across my desk this year. And the vetting process was really difficult. I should also let you know that there were some incredible pens that I reviewed that were on loan from others. Otherwise, they would have been on the list as well. So let's get on with the list for 2022 right now. You'll have to forgive the background noise. It's minus 20 degrees Celsius outside. And I've got three humidifiers working full blast to keep the humidity up here in my office studio where I keep my precious acoustic guitars. So I'm going to do this list in reverse order and then counting down from 11. And you'll find a link in the description to my review of each of the pens discussed in the video. Make sure you watch all the way to the end as I'll be adding a couple of special pens to the list. Being a spreadsheet and data geek, as well as a fountain pen geek and a guitar geek to add to my total geekiness, I created a spreadsheet that helped me rank my top 11 fountain pen experiences in 2022. I used a number of categories of evaluation to sort them all out, including price, quality, performance, looks, value, and personal preference. While the price is objective, the other data points are my personal rankings. When I got the final ranking from the spreadsheet, I looked at the list and made adjustments based on whether I felt the pen was too low or too high in the rankings and made adjustments to the scores accordingly. It isn't scientific, but it helps sort some very subjective opinions into some semblance of order. So here we go from the 11th place to the first place. Number 11, the Schaefer icon. It feels good to say something nice about a modern pen from Schaefer. Schaefer and Parker are not the same companies they were even 20 years ago, but this pen's cool, sleek design and balance in the hand, the postability, and the quality of construction made it a pen that really surprised me in 2022. Of course, the original nib was typically awful for an Asian-made steel hooded fine nib, but I replaced that very quickly with a black Bobby Bent nib for just a few dollars. Very, very easy replacement. And that has made this pen one of my favorites and one I like to carry around with me. It has a really great, what the hell is that? Cool factor. What the hell is that? Hey, come over here and look at this deal. What the hell is that? <laughs> Hey, you kid, get away from there. Don't put your lips on it. <laughs> what the hell is this? And number 10, the Magon A1. Here's a pen that I didn't want to purchase, but there was such an interest from viewers in having me review this pen that I decided to get one knowing that I probably wouldn't like it. <laughs> I don't have great use for retractable pens being retired. If I went to work every day, I might be interested in a pilot vanishing point. But there's some controversy around this pen, as you may expect, because of the fact this is a clone of the famous pilot vanishing point retractable pen. As usual, the Chinese nib left a lot to be desired, and the original nib unit leaked more than the Trump White House. But when I ordered an actual pilot vanishing point black 18 karat gold stub nib unit to replace it, it has become a really handy pen for quick notes and writes with a lot of character. Number nine, the Ranga Abimanyu. I love my Ranga 4C and 3C Ebonite pens. So when Ranga had a group sale for this model, I saw this incredible acrylic called Chestnut and I just had to have it. Look at that. 
It looks like root beer or Guinness. Do yourselves a favor, folks. Get on the Ranga mailing list so you can take advantage of these periodic group sales. Ranga makes an incredible variety of models and acrylics and is only rivaled in its selection by Pen BBS pens, in my opinion. The quality of these pens is amazing. These are handmade, not CNC computer made fountain pens. The selection of nibs is off the chart, but just look at this acrylic material. The shape and feel of the Abimanyu in my hand is very unique and wonderful, and the nibs are hand tuned and tested before they leave Ranga. I've had some awful experiences with Indian made pens, but Ranga is one of the best makers of fountain pens in the world, in my opinion. A wonderful pen, a great value, and an awesome experience. On to number eight, the Jinhao 80. Again, a pen that I had no interest in purchasing except for audience demand. This is supposedly a clone of the Lamy 2000. That's just ridiculous. I mean, come on. Oh, come on! It might look like the Lamy 2000 when it is capped, but the similarity ends there. If it were a clone, wouldn't it have to have a hooded nib, tapering brushed metal silver section, and be a piston filler? Is it just me, or is the comparison between the Jinhao 80 and the Lamy 2000 just nuts? One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. That ridiculous contrived controversy aside, this pen is surprisingly good. Not so much for the standard nib, which is typically thin and boring and scratchy, but because it will take regular Lamy Z50 style nibs. For this all black Jinhao 80, I selected a Lamy black cursive nib to give the pen some character in writing, and I just love it. The best features of the Jinhao 80 are, it's inexpensive, so you can buy the whole set for less than 25 bucks. I bought four more of them in blue, burgundy, black with gold and this tan color with gold and they have these gold Jinhao nibs of course they take the Lamy Z50 nibs so you can fit them with your favorite Lamy nib like broads or stubs and it will take Lamy and Parker long cartridges the drawbacks with this pen are that the the brush plastic on the pen isn't durable so those parts will begin to shine with use but it's easy enough just to take some quadruple aught uh, steel wool and buff the pen back to its previous matte finish it's very easy to do and these pens make great stocking stuffers and number seven the narwhal original plus i'm so pleased with this pen i'm glad narwhal sent this one to me for review and i'm keeping it because it's a keeper there are now two great vac filling fountain pens that are relatively inexpensive my favorite pen bbs 456 and now the narwhal pronounced narwhal original plus of course in canada original plus means a harvey's hamburger with cheese but narwhal has hit it out of the park with this new model vac filler the clear acrylic with the colorful swirls is just perfect and the vac filler is well made and takes a ton of ink the shutoff valve is a great feature for those of you that travel as it saves ink disasters in the air And here's a tip for you vac filler lovers that don't like the ink shutoff valve because you forget to unscrew the knob before you're writing or you're just too lazy to do it. You can remove the little o-ring at the end of the piston, the small ring not the big piston ring, and the ink will flow with the knob closed. There, don't say I never learned you nothing. Fat, drunk and stupid is no way to go through life, son. And number six. The Wingsung 629 Piston Filler. Now we're getting into some of the really nice models that showed up in 2022. This is a very well-made pen and a lovely option for those of you that like the look, the size and the shape of a Mont Blanc 146, but not the huge price tag. I bought this one with a 14 karat gold nib and it's excellent. If you don't really need the bounce from the 14 karat gold nib, you can save some bucks and just get the steel nib version which is very smooth and nice i really don't think the difference between the two nibs is worth the extra price but that's just me the piston works beautifully it has two styles of ink window to choose from and comes in a classic cigar shape or the flat top style body shape a really lovely pen and number six this is my fountain pen indulgence 
for 2022. My Leonardo Momento Zero Grande Dutch Pen Show 2021 in Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2. That's a mouthful, but look at that acrylic. Isn't that incredible? This pen is just breathtaking. Of course, the Grande size, it's a piston filler, has that milk bottle shaped section, which I really, really love. And this has a special nib with the Dutch Pen Show 2021 logo engraved on it. And it's an 18 karat gold nib in medium. Everything about this pen is amazing. The only drawbacks were an issue with the specially engraved nib that Leonardo fixed for me and the price tag which is more than I've ever paid for a fountain pen. This would be pen number one for 2022 for me if it weren't for the price. And number four is another stunning fountain pen that I obtained in 2022. This is my Waterman Black Sea Karen. This fountain pen already has a bunch of history. I wanted the Black Sea version of this pen to pair up with my Amber Karen, but I balked at the price. But I couldn't resist it once it was on sale with Applebaum's 2021 Fountain Pen Day Sale. Yes, you heard that right. I ordered it in November 2021. I didn't actually get this pen until May 2022. So this pen might just be on my best and worst pen experiences of 2022 video because this isn't the pen that I originally ordered. That pen came with a dented nib and no converter, so I returned it and several months and many headaches later, I received this one as a replacement. However, it wasn't the pen that I ordered. I had ordered a stub, and when that proved unobtainable, I changed to a medium, which was the dented one, and I returned, and it was replaced with this one in a box that said medium, but the nib turns out to be a broad instead. Marked L by Waterman for large, but I didn't make a fuss about this one because this is a totally amazing nib, even if I didn't ask for it finally a lucky break and because it's so amazing i've now let all of my frustrations about this pen flow away like the gorgeous flow of this broad nib with this super stunning shimmering gold and jet black j urban shogun ink and number three the Majon p136 piston filler and Majon is at it again and this time instead of taking on pilot they're taking on mont blanc and specifically the mont blanc 146. This is not unlike the Wingsung 629, which is again a clone of the Mont Blanc 146. Certainly the cigar shaped version of this pen is. But the P136 now comes in five colors and there's an optional wrench to disassemble the piston and nib assembly. The P136 is extremely well made and one of the best features for me, as usual, is the ability to swap out the Moonman nib for something a little better. In this case, I've swapped it for a Kaigalu Long Blade Architect style nib, which I just love. And this pen has proved to be so popular that now the price is dropping below $10 US. Collect them all. And number two, the Hongdian N7N8. And I've included the Hongdian N8, which I received but not reviewed yet, along with the N7 piston filler, as both pens are very similar form factors. The only difference being that the N8 is a cartridge converter pen and has a removable section. Otherwise, the pens are identical. Hongdian just keeps making excellent fountain pens and coming out with new models all the time. I could have included the N6 as well, especially with this stealthy black version with the black architect style nib. It all depends on your preference of body shape, whether you like the Mont Blanc cigar shape or the Pelican flat top style piston filler. The Hongdian N7 would be this year's best new piston filler if it weren't for, wait for it, number one, the Jinhao X159. Boy howdy did this pen make a splash in 2022. All the panty twisting of old inky fingered men in the pen world won't stop the surge of sales and interest in this new version of Jin Hao's venerable Model 159. They not only match the Mont Blanc 149 millimeter for millimeter in size and shape, but they also added an excellent number eight size steel nib and did it at 0.6% the price of a Mont Blanc. The plastic of the pen is every bit as smooth 
as the precious plastic of the Mont Blanc. The big difference, of course, is the Mont Blanc is a piston filler, where this is a cartridge converter. The X159 is much, much lighter than its brass predecessor, the 159, and it's available in seven colors for six bucks a piece. You can get all seven colors for less than 50 bucks, and you've got your stocking stuffer shopping done for the whole family. Found pens for everyone. It'll be interesting to see which company, Majon or Jinhao, will come up with a piston filling version of the 149 first. My bet is for Majon, as they already have a piston filling mechanism and Jinhao doesn't do a piston filler. That's my list, but I promised a couple of extras. Viewer Ed Anthony suggested I add one of the vintage pens I've restored as part of my series Pen Resurrection Sunday. He wanted to see which of the restorations I've done so far has been my most satisfying or favorite. So I looked at the 11 episodes I've posted so far and selected as my favorite this Wall Eversharp 641A gold filled unique check 14 karat gold very flexible nib lever filler from 1925. I selected it for a number of reasons. It's one of the most beautiful vintage pens I've been able to obtain. It cleaned up so beautifully from its very dingy original state and I was able to fit it successfully with a new sack and get it working. And this 14 karat gold nib wrote so surprisingly soft, wet and flexible that I was astonished when I first inked it up. Plus the research on finding this very pen in a 1925 Waterman catalog was very satisfying. I had a lot of help from various people on the Canadian Vintage Fountain Pen Facebook group especially from Andrew Timar of the Toronto Pen Club. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous fountain pen. And I have a very special honorable mention, and this is for this very unique pen from John Hubbard of Moonwalk Pens. This is a 3D printed fountain pen designed and engineered by John Hubbard of Huntsville, Alabama who actually worked as an engineer on the Apollo moon missions. This is an extraordinary achievement and a highlight of my pen year for 2022. It brought back all of the memories of watching Neil and Buzz land the eagle in the Sea of Tranquility back in July of 1969. And the pen is an incredible writer in addition to the many time-consuming processes required to produce and finish it. It's a remarkable achievement and is now one of my prized fountain pen possessions that I will treasure and never relinquish. Thanks again, John, for the opportunity to review and especially own this marvelous fountain pen. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.